Welcome, everybody, to the Gym Masters Show Live. How are you today? It is Sunday. It is just a few days away from Christmas. Everybody ready? Have you done all your shopping? Or I mean, have you sent your letters to the North Pole to Santa Claus? There's no shopping. Everything is delivered by Santa Claus, right? And there is an Easter bunny and a tooth fairy, isn't there? <laughs> Good to have you with us. It is Sunday. Welcome, everybody. Started just a little bit late, making sure all the technical things. Again, you know, we are here in the United States, and our guest, uh, the wonderful Orla Fallon, is in Ireland. So we want to make sure all the technical things are uh, in line, and they are sound and audio, and everything is perfect. And because uh, we want to put on as best a show for you as possible as we've been doing for some almost 40 weeks here, over 200 plus episodes, I think 200, 220, 230 episodes now of our entertainment lifestyle talk show series. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are around the world. We do have an international audience that watches our show. What is this show all about? This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series, sort of like the old school talk shows where we bring back the lost art of conversation. We have real good, deep conversations. We have great guests on location segments, special features. We talk about everything. We have guests from all walks of life too, from authors to inspiring people, comedians and sports stars, culinary uh, artists and chefs, as well as folks from television and film, music, Broadway, Hollywood, international guests. And of course, we have all of you, our viewers, who we call our levities. So I've always said the show is about light, love, and uh, levity. And back in the summer, I said it uh, just a little too fast, and we came up with the word levity. So we use that now with the Gym Master Show Live. And this show is patterned not like a podcast or a stream. It's really like a television show. That's how we present it, uh, unique for what's out there available these days. Uh, it's sort of born out of my professional work as a TV and radio presenter, host, personality here in the United States, uh, as well as a journalist and actor, writer, producer, stage MC, voiceover artist, and narrator. Been doing that work for networks and stations and on location and in studios for years. So about almost 40 weeks ago, we turned on the lights, built this home studio here, we broadcast. Uh, from the greater New York City area in the United States of America, along the scenic southern New England coast between New York and Boston. And uh, we have an international audience of viewers and loveties, and we welcome every single one of you. We wish you a happy Hanukkah, a very Merry Christmas, happy Kwanzaa, and best, and hopefully it's going to be a much brighter 2021 for all of us. So we're in the midst of the holiday season. Our set is nice and festive. What do you think? You like our set? Uh, only the best for our viewers on the show. And of course, we've got our holiday mug here filled now with some nice warm coffee. May your days be merry and bright from Jim and all of us at the Jim Master Show Live. We've got amazing music. We have an extraordinary artist, singer, vocalist, musician, harpist, the wonderful Orla Fallon. She is in beautiful Ireland. And um, I'm Irish on my father's mother's side. So... Uh, I love when we have these guests on. Now, of course, you know her from her solo career, which is brilliant, but also from Celtic Woman. And I've had an opportunity to uh, know the folks from Celtic Woman for years, and they're wonderful. And she was with Celtic one, uh, Woman for a good while and has her own solo career, which is absolutely brilliant. We're going to welcome her on in just a second. But first, we like to welcome all of our viewers, our loveties watching all around the world. Kathy Short is here. Good afternoon, Jim, and our lovety family. Happy Sunday before Christmas. That's right. That's right. I've got my nice Irish sweater on and my hat, and we're all good to go on this end, huh? Good to see you, Kathy, in Cleveland, Ohio, USA, and in the Netherlands and Holland. Good to have our wonderful Willie here on the show. Hello, Jim and Lovities. Enjoy the show. Greetings from Holland. Thank you very much. Bernadette is here. Hi, Jim and Lovities. Good to see you, Bernadette. And Lisa Brown. Hey, Lisa. Good to see you. I think the last time I saw you, Lisa, and you saw me, we were at the Palace Theater in Waterbury, Connecticut, and I believe uh, was it Jim Brickman was performing, George Paris? George Paris is going to be a guest on our show in the January time, as well as Mario Frangoulis, Nathan Carter is going to be joining us uh, from England, the English country music star. Yesterday, Darren Holden was on with us. Sir James Galway, Lady Jean Galway were on with us on Friday. Good to see you, Lisa. You're watching in Connecticut. I love that. Welcome to the show. Lots of comments coming in. We're a very viewer-centric, viewer-interactive show, so we welcome everybody. Feel free to post. 
who's watching on our YouTube channel. We hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. We have a couple of hundred episodes of our series tomorrow. Luke McMaster, Canadian singer and songwriter, is going to be with us. And tonight, another fabulous Irish singer, uh, Emmy-nominated singer and producer, originally from Ireland. He's here in the States. Uh, Michael Londra is on tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Live. Jennifer Barry in a snowy Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's actually snowing here again outside our window, and it's very beautiful. It's coming down very light. Now, we already have snow on the ground, but it's coming down really light. It's very picturesque. I said to Orla, that snow scene combined with her beautiful uh, harp action would make for a wonderful video. <laughs> it's not really sticking because we already have enough snow out there, but it's just very scenic, you know, the week before Christmas. Christmas. Slancha to you, Jennifer. Happy holidays in Pennsylvania, USA. Lisa Brown says Merry Christmas, Orla, as well. Carla is watching in Brazil. Once again, one of our loveties in South America. Hello, Jim and gang. Happy for this uh, fantastic episode this Sunday afternoon. That's exactly what it is. Good to see you, Carla, in Brazil. And uh, hi, Jim. Hi, everyone. Kathleen Walker, New York City. Welcome, Kathleen. Willie says, beautiful sweater. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm a sweater guy. I love this time of the year. I've got a lot of sweaters and turtlenecks, cardigans. I just love this time of the year. And everybody's saying hello to each other, which we love when that happens as well. And so much more. Cozy sweater. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're moving out all the sweaters. And from Northern Ireland, Chris is here. Chris, good to see you. Good evening, Jim. Merry Christmas to all loveties. Uh, from Northern Ireland, he's just outside uh, Belfast. Denise says hello from Spokane, Washington. Uh, Llewellyn is here as well. Good to see you, Llewellyn. And now let's welcome, without further ado, my very, very special guest and dear friend Orla Fallon is here again. She is uh, extraordinary at what she does. She is a multi-talent and you've seen her in so many different incarnations, of course, Celtic woman and so much more, but she has a brilliant career. Don't you just love that one? <laughs> I love that one. A harpist and a singer from County Wicklow. Orla is an original member of the group Celtic Woman. The group's TV specials have aired on PBS in the US over 14,000 times. And Orla has toured extensively in, the, in North America, playing such prestigious venues as Carnegie Hall, Radio City Music Hall in New York, Red Rocks in Colorado, the Greek Theater, LA, the Boston Opera House. Since leaving Celtic Woman in December 2008, Orla has carved out a successful solo path. In February 2009, she won four Irish Music Association awards, including Best Solo Singer, Best Harpist. Her version of The Water is Wide featured on the popular U.S. soap, The Bold and the Beautiful. Did you know that? And on the Emmy Awards that same year. And in 2010, Orla's first solo public television special, Orla Fallon's Celtic Christmas put her back at the center of the PBS television universe in the United States and more than 100 stations aired the show. And, uh, and that was, of course, followed up with even more uh, wonderful specials. Orla's Fallon, Orla Fallon's Celtic Christmas shot at the Polk Theater in Nashville, Tennessee in August 2010 included DVDs of the show and, and so much more. She uh, then had another public television special entitled My Land, which uh, starred Orla in an Irish musical as well, celebrating with, of course, the legendary Dubliners, Tommy Fleming, and uh, the Dublin Gospel Choir as special guests, and so much more. Uh, her companion uh, CD and DVD reached number four on the World Music Charts, also won an Irish Music Association Award for the Best New CD in uh, February of 2012. And um, we're going to welcome her to the show. There is so much more to her phenomenal biography, and we're going to talk about all of that. Uh, she has a new CD out in 2020, Lore, which we're going to talk about as well. But uh, live from Ireland, let's welcome my very special guest and great friend Orla Fallon to the show. Orla Merry Christmas. It's wonderful to have you here and welcome to the Jim Master Show Live. Well, it's so lovely to be here, Jim, and hello to all the loveties out there. I just love that. I think it's mighty, as they say, and uh, and you're rocking that sweater too. It's fab. Thank you very much. I look like I should be, you know, walking the streets of Dublin or something right now. My Irish is really out far and wide today. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You look like you should be having a little pint of Guinness beside you with that sweater. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little coffee with a little Bailey, with a little Bailey's in it. Oh, now, now you're talking. That sounds mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah. Really nice. So how are you today? Um, and how are, how's your holiday season going? I know you've had, um, that new CD out, but uh, it's an interesting year, isn't it, Orla? We've obviously been going through a lot of different things that have sort of 
paused some of the activity. How have you been doing through everything uh, this particular year, my friend? Well, it's a very different year for everybody. And, um, you know, usually you'd be so busy doing concerts and gigs around this time of the year. But actually, I'm home. I'm here um, in my little music room in County Carlo. And uh, I feel very grateful that everybody, all my family are safe and well, because not everybody has been fortunate enough to have come through this unscathed. So to anybody, any of your lovely listeners out there who have people who are sick or who have lost people, I say I, I'm thinking of you and that my heart goes out to you. You know, I often and say we took so much for granted in the past you know just to go and sing and do a concert jump in your car or go and meet a friend all those the little things that we took so for granted we can't do now so i think we will when this passes that we will appreciate all the little things so much more so usually around this time of the year actually i was just thinking this night last year i was doing a concert in kilkenny a lovely christmas concert and i had been up in rte in dublin recording something for another show i was running from one thing to the other <laughs> and today i was out in the garden my son like we were raking up leaves and I have a few bulbs left. I was planting those. My son was kicking football and uh, we went for a long walk. So it's very different. But, you know, it's nice to get the time to to spend with your family and just, you know, I've no desire to go near shops because everywhere is so crowded and I'm kind of scared of the whole thing. So we're kind of just keeping safe and well here at home. And we're lucky that we can do that. And for Christmas, you'll be home and and safe and uh, everybody staying put pretty much because that's what we're doing here, too. Just yes, to be safe. that's it. I'm going to sing at mass on Christmas Eve, and oh, that's really nice to do that. And um, yes, my husband and my son will come with me, and my mom, and um, but we will be here for Christmas. And we, it's the weather's supposed to be nice, so we'll just go for a walk. We, we're lucky we live by the River Barrow, which is beautiful. So we'll go for a walk. And of course, Santa's coming too. So there's great That's excitement great. about Santa coming. So uh, yeah, and we'll just watch lots of movies. Freddie was off school sick last week. So we spent the the uh, week watching lovely movies all after, you know, afternoon. And we watched The Grinch and Christmas Chronicles 1 and oh, 2 nice. and Home Alone. And it was fantastic. So all the little things are really nice and you appreciate them so much more now. Absolutely, my friend. Beautifully said. And hello to Freddie. He's watching uh, the soccer match in the other room right now, right? Your son? He, well, uh, if you heard any wars, he's actually he was watching soccer, but now he has he has this um football table thing, and uh, he himself and my husband are playing that. And you can hear loads of if you roar. I hear and some shouting, sound effects. So. <laughs> it's like there, there, there's a real tough match going there's on there. Great game. There's a great game going on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just want to show you some of the warmth and welcome and uh, love coming from our viewers all around the world, which always happens on our show. Denise Ola uh, says, welcome, Orla. I am looking forward to hearing more of your story. Kathy Short in Cleveland, Ohio, uh, USA. Welcome, Orla. Bernadette says, hi, Orla. Welcome to Lovety Hall. Love your voice and music. Carla, who's in South America and Brazil, welcome and greetings from South America, Orla. Sherry is here. Hello, Jim and Lovities. So happy to be here in Liberty Hall with all of you. Kathleen in New York City says, hi, Orla, and welcome. Willie, who's just across the way there in Holland in the Netherlands, welcome, Orla. Have fun. The Gym Masters show. Wow. Llewellyn, who's uh, over towards Phoenix, Palm, well, actually Palm Springs, California area. Good day all from Llewellyn watching on our YouTube channel. Denise says hello from Spokane, uh, Northern Ireland represented as well. Merry Christmas from Chris. He is in uh, Northern Ireland, uh, sort of towards the Belfast area as well. There he is. Welcome, Orla. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Time Travel 888. I love that. Wow. Time Travel, welcome. Yeah, I hope you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. We would love that. And if you have one, we'll return the favor. A very Merry Christmas to you, Jim, and the beautifully talented and most of all, kind-hearted Orla Fallon. Oh, that's so nice. And you know what I I, I keep saying during all this, isn't it brilliant that we have the technology like that you're there over in your place and I'm here and everybody's like all scattered all over the world and it just becomes a little global village and we're all connected and it's just fantastic. So thank God for technology. Well, I'm so happy that, uh, you know, we were linked and put together here, um, you know, have known each other through public television, of course, Celtic Woman and your other solo projects as well. And it's just so beautiful. And I've been having such a great time, you know, with this show, this Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series that we do literally every single day. Like this week, we had Sir James Galway and Lady Jean wow. Galway on Friday live from their beautiful home in Switzerland. 
uh, we've been doing like two shows a day. Like today I have you on and then tonight I'm back <laughs> with You're Michael busy. Andra. It's uh, Darren Holden was yesterday. Uh, but especially the Irish uh, artists, I've known so many for so many years, and they're so beloved here in the States and around the world as well. And I think that's really beautiful because you guys are so good at uh, greeting and welcoming your fans and, and uh, making your fans feel comfortable and enjoy your talents. And I think that's really a beautiful thing. And you can see that even with the folks who watch this show, our viewers, and even folks that are fans of yours sort of uh, melding or blending here on our show, Lisa, uh, Brown. Oh, hi, Lisa. Hi, Orla. Merry Christmas to you and your family. She's in Connecticut. Um, she's wonderful. You know, oh, Orla. she's amazing. You know, I met Lisa Isn't she years great? ago. Oh, she's a wonderful lady. I first met her at a Jim Brickman concert cause I toured yes. the gym many years ago and we are still in touch and she's just so lovely. And actually she sent me a lovely Christmas card, which arrived last week. She's an amazing lady. Was that at the palace theater in Waterbury, Connecticut with Jim Brickman when he was there? Cause yes, I yeah. Yeah. That's where I, you and I also saw each other then too, because I was there that night because um, Sherry Marcucci, who does the marketing and promotion for the theater, is a friend of mine, and okay. she, she had me come and uh, I had wow. interviewed Jim on public television because he had a public television special at that time, and Lisa was there, and Lisa is, is a Facebook friend as well, and she she lives in Connecticut. She's wonderful. Uh, Willie in Holland says, Orla, you're now a lovety. Oh. <laughs> That You're officially a Lovity on the show. Wow. Sherry says, uh, welcome to Lovity Hall, uh, Orla. So happy you're here with us today from Sherry's show in line. And uh, Time Travel 888 is watching from Boston, Massachusetts. Love, you. Love Boston. Great spot. Yeah. We have a lot of family in uh, that area as well. So Orla, how did this, let's go back a little bit in time. How did you first, as a, as a, a youth there in Ireland growing up, uh, what were your inspirations to go into music and being a performer? It, there seems to be a running theme where a lot of the folks I've been interviewing, friends from Ireland and performers and whatnot, have all been saying a similar thing. They're like, well, gee, you know, when you when you grow up in Ireland, your parents or your grandparents put an instrument in your hand and it's either going to be the fiddle or the guitar or the flute or whatever. Emir Migun, who's a friend who was on the show, of course, you know, wonderful Irish flautist. She has said that too. And I think some of the others, uh, I think Connor McGinty said it. They're all like, Oh no, no. You, when you're a kid, they hand you an instrument and you got to run with it. How about you? Uh, how did it start for you early on as a youth growing up? Well, I was singing. I actually never remember a time when I didn't sing. I was one of those annoying kids that just sang nonstop. <laughs> and like my dad has said to me, Orla, do you ever stop? And even Freddie says to me, do you ever stop singing? I sing, I think, from the time I get up until the time I go to bed. And um, so I, my grandmother in Kerry was an amazing woman. For She was like a treasure chest of songs. So she mm -hmm. knew every Irish song going. But she was not only great for the songs, but she was a brilliant baker. So as she baked in her kitchen and I'd be baking with her, she'd be singing the songs. So like shoo la room, you know, shoo, shoo, shoo la room. She'd be baking her cake and shoo go suck a dog, shoo go cune. So that's how I learned. So I never actually sat down and learned them. I picked them up from her. Her. as she was singing and walk you know walking around the kitchen and working so and she just instilled in me this great love and passion she was deeply passionate about irish music and songs and stories and my mother had a great love of the irish language and then when I was a teenager, I went to boarding school in Dublin and it had a great musical tradition. And the nun there, Sister Eugene, she was actually great friends with Derek Bell from the Chieftains. And John Sheehan from the Dubliners was one of her best friends. So, you know, his tune, the Merino Waltz. Well, we actually were playing that in the harps before it was ever released uh, on the radio and uh, released as a record. So um, and I just Sister Eugene gave me a great passion for the harp and um so I've always met lovely teachers as I was going along and uh, was just deeply involved, you know, loved the music from the time I was tiny. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So what were some of those early uh, breaks for you? You know, when you're going along and maybe doing it in school or just doing it, you know, learning and fine tuning your craft and your talents and your skill set. What were some of those opportunities, like whether it was competitions or just various things that you were doing to to, and your parents were doing with you to get noticed, get your name out there and sort of yeah. create this, this phenomenal career path. 
Well, I suppose I didn't really do. Oh, there's Freddie now. Would you come say hello? <laughs> no, he's right. Oh, is that well, Freddie? Yeah, he's gone. He came in and he's gone again. But I, I didn't really do a lot of competitions when I was younger. But when I was in secondary school, I started doing the Fesh Kill. So I won a few Fesh Kill uh, medals, which was like very prestigious. It's a, a big competition in Dublin. It's an international competition. And then um, I used to... Um, do in, in school I sang at a lot of things for the school and that kind of got your name out there and then when I left school and started teaching I started singing with the group at Anuna and I got great experience from them and then I just started doing demos and recording stuff and I was you know you'd sing at something and somebody would hear you sing and then they'd say can you come and sing at this so you got more confident as you went along and somebody would always hear you singing and ask you to, to do something else and through that I was singing um I did a demo when I was singing in the concert hall one night and Chloe's dad actually heard me and he said oh I really liked your singing but I wish I'd heard more of you and have you got a demo and I gave him the demo and uh, then he, it was him that gave it to David Downs so that was how oh. I ended up in Celtic Woman and David got the demo and then about two years later he called me and says we're putting together this show and one once off show for PBS and I'd heard of PBS of course and I thought oh my god this is amazing like yeah. and uh, so that's how it happened so it's just funny. so one thing always led to another to another and some people might not realize that I've always known that story which I think is sorry sorry good. Jim you're cutting out there now cutting out a little bit uh I think it's really amazing that Celtic woman when created was really supposed to just be a one night only thing. Just, just the one night for Celtic woman. And it turned into this major, you know, act and television specials on public television and tours. Uh, that was really amazing, huh? Sorry, Jim. I couldn't hear any of that because my connection went, I think I can hear you now. Can you hear us now? Oh, no, it's gone again. Hello. It's going in and out. Yeah, it seems to be weak there in Ireland a little bit. We had a little bit of that issue with Darren yesterday too. Um, could be weather as well. Can you hear us now? No, I can't. I, I'm so sorry. And so tell all your all your listeners. I'm so sorry. See, I live in the middle of nowhere, literally. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes the Wi-Fi it's is not great, so and sometimes it cuts out. And so you could, I think, I, I think I can hear you now. Can so you hear sorry, us now? yeah, it's kind it'll, of it goes like a bit. It gray, goes in so and out. Apologies. No, that's fine. That's fine. They understand. These are loveties. No, they're they're friendly people. Oh. Um, the it's amazing, and I, I knew the story about Celtic Woman just really being a one-off, one-night-only thing, almost like an experiment. But to see what happened with Celtic Woman when it was not thought about as being, you know, what it turned into is extraordinary, right? One night only and it turned into I, public television I special. I can't hear you. S still can't hear? No. Some, yeah, something on your end might be loose or something that, where everything is good on here, we hear you, we see oh, I you. I can hear you, I can hear you now. It just, it went <laughs> like you, it was, it was all, yeah. So apologies yeah. about that. Every time no, the, the Wi-Fi goes in and goes out. So maybe what I'll do is I'll talk really, really fast. Celtic woman, <laughs> Celtic woman. Celtic woman was only supposed to be one night only, but that's quite amazing that it was only one night only and it turned into the big thing that it is, right? Isn't that unbelievable? <laughs> did you get that? I did. I did, yeah. <laughs> Technology good, is good great. Good thing I'm originally from New York. I can talk fast. You can talk fast. And you're in a New Yorker. Yeah, so it was incredible because this was just like, I remember, um, meeting uh, the other girls from Celtic Woman and thinking, you know, we were filming the show, but you know they said it was for one night only but when we did the night we filmed it it did feel like there was something very special you know everybody was buzzing after it and I remember my family came up with me and said what is this show and i said well it's a bit of everything a little bit of this kind of song and that kind of song but it's really nice like but it really did feel like there was something magical and something special about it and it just snowballed and took off and sure we achieved things beyond our wildest dreams through it and met people and traveled to places. It was a phenomenal experience. Mm, could you have ever imagined? I mean, really, it was something that just became an international uh, success story. What was it like performing with the ladies and being on stage and, and just, you know, having an opportunity to grace all of these international audiences from around the world who are embracing all of you. But sure, it was just a huge honor and privilege because, you know, 
when you're a kid singing into your hairbrush at home and you're dreaming yeah. <laughs> of of being in, 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 on, on any stage, you know, but to go to places like Carnegie Hall, Red Rocks, Colorado, you know, the Boston Opera House, all of these Radio City Music Hall, she, you, never, you just dream of these places and you never think, you know, I've been to New York many times since and you stand outside those places and say, my Lord, I was there, I was on the stage there. So it was such a privilege and all the people we met and it was an amazing journey journey and um yeah if you never did anything else again you'd die happy because you've done everything you ever wanted to do through that group yeah so it was great and the exposure and the notoriety mm. of course and uh and working with the other ladies too do you you guys all stay in touch with each other not as much now, you hear, you know, because I suppose everybody's life is so different and so busy, you know, yeah. I had, yeah, um, I had been, I was talking to Marie a good bit during the summer and, um, but I suppose, you know, we, we, we lived in each other's pockets for so long and then, yeah. yeah, and then I suppose everybody's life takes a different direction and people are busy and, um, but it was a fabulous experience when, for as long as we did it, you know, amazing. And then tell us once uh, wrapped for your side of it with uh, Celtic Woman and the wonderful participation in Celtic Woman for you, what was next for you? Well, you see, I got kind of tired of being on the road because I am a That's home a lot. Guard, And it's a lot. It's hard. Like, I remember leaving here one like on the 3rd of February and I didn't come home again till July and I say my poor long suffering husband I don't know how he he hadn't traded me in for a, a newer model of a, birth, <laughs> of a wife like but it was hard on him coming home so um I said I wanted to spend more time at home and I am actually a real home bird I I don't like being away from home too much so I used to find I used to be the one like David Downs and all the girls would run from me at the airport because I was always in tears <laughs> when we'd be going off on a tour so um but the funny thing was I left Desmore was the guitar player in the band in Celtic Woman and he said to me Orla he had a really deep voice and a Dublin accent he says you left the road to go back on the road worse than ever because I actually then when I left, I, I did two PBS specials and I was busier than ever because when I was in Celtic Woman, when you were promoting a show and doing all the pledges for PBS, you could split it up and share it. But this time it was just me. So I was like running. I was I reminded myself of one stage of Tom Hanks from the movie, you know, that movie when he was in the airport all the time. That's what I was like. But, you know, it was it was amazing to in that um, it was like I remember somebody saying to me, this is your show. So it was your own show for PBS. And sure, Jeepers, that was a great privilege as well. And the great thing was all the fans, a lot of them came with you from Celtic Woman and have journeyed with me from then and they're still there now and that's a huge privilege and they're just so yeah. loyal and I've met amazing people and I always say an artist is nothing without their fans yes. and they right. and I I even don't like saying fans because they're more than fans they're friends and right. they're just incredible and you couldn't do what you do but for these brilliant friends and for their amazing support yeah so that's huge it's amazing, isn't it? Kind of like our loveities here, the viewers that watch all the time and share the yeah. news and tell each other. And some of them know me from my professional work in television and radio, but others have just sort of, you know, stumbled on this show and then they're following it every day and posting. And it's really, really absolutely beautiful when they do that. And you know that you really, you love the fans, the interaction and really love care it. about that interaction, right? It's really important to me. And I think it's Britain now I'm a technological dummy. I'm useless, but I love, you know, reaching out to people through Facebook, through social media, sending the videos. And it's amazing during the lockdown, I used to post a video every few days or whatever. And um, the response was phenomenal and people loved you know, and it, I felt like, gosh, this is nice. You're make, you know, making somebody's day because people were going through tough times a bit brighter. So it was brilliant. And it was another lovely way of keeping in touch and keeping everybody in the loop. And uh, that's the brilliant thing about all of this technology is that the world is actually really very small. So as you can see there, you have people from all over the place. And um, but it's very important to me to keep in touch with everybody as best as I can and, you know, reach out to them. And yeah. So you've been really busy with uh, recording too. You've got a new album mm. out, right? That's exciting. Tell us about that. Yeah, I've been I've been really lucky in the last couple of years because 
when I left Celtic Woman, I was also working with this great record label in Nashville called Green Hill. And oh, yeah. then, yeah, they're and they're they're brilliant. And uh, so for, um, in the last couple of years, I've done like a couple of albums for them. I did a Christmas album for, for them last year, A Winter's Tale. And then this year I did Lore. So I was, um, which is a collection of, you know, traditional, my favorite, favorite traditional songs. And we started recording it in January and I'm fast in the studio because I work with Dan Shea and he has taught me so much and I know exactly what he likes. So he's in California, I'm in Dublin and, but we have a down off pit path now and working together and um, we just finished. And the next thing, all of this COVID thing kicked off. We were meant to do one other day, but when we listened back to stuff, we said we didn't need it. And we were lucky that we had it done uh, before because the whole country shut down. We couldn't go anywhere. But mm. I'm delighted with that album and the reaction to it has been phenomenal because I like I've tipped my toe in the water with I did kind of like an Americana album with Sweet By and By, which is really nice as well. But to go back to my roots with the traditional stuff was fantastic. And people really re and, you know, it was just mostly harp and just voice and let those brilliant songs speak for themselves. Mm, there it is there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 That's I love fantastic. The, I love the cover of it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, who designed that? Was that designed by uh, you know a design company or uh, Green really? Hill? Actually Green Hill. Designed they it they, the they do that too, really. They they have somebody there in house, and they did it, and I think they did a fabulous job. It's gorgeous. That's that's uh, for those who are joining us. That's Orla's newest album or the latest album. There's others too that, of course, are very beloved. That's the Winter's Tale. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that again for those watching who are is familiar with that one. I have all of these. They're fantastic. Yeah, so that's like, like a, 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 um, a winter Christmas album um, with all of my, because I had done two or three other Christmas albums before that. I absolutely love Christmas music. And yeah, so do I. Winter music, just love it. Yeah. And uh, we were like, oh my goodness. So we've explored, but it was brilliant. I, you know, I revisited some of the songs that I had done and then other songs that I didn't know that well. I did stuff like Patapan and it was, it's just, it was just really nice. And then Noel Nouvelle. So there's a little bit of, you know, it's just, and I just, the arrangements are, arrangements are lovely. Dan Shea does, does a great job in the arrangements. Actually, I was going to sing um, The Holly She Bears a Berry. And when we talk about Winter's Tale, maybe I could, it's an, it's just, it's a really, really old folk song. And, uh, Maybe it might be all right to sing it now. Yeah, would you like to? We would love that. Yeah, Absolutely. it's just it's on a company, but it's just I love the song now. Usually, you know, when I sing it, I'd have somebody singing a bit of harmony with it, but the melody is so nice, you don't even need anybody. So, well, I sing a bit of it. Give you oh, and the first tree that's in the green wood, it was the holly. And there's a monkey here making faces behind me behind the camera. So apologies if I started laughing at the end of it. Really? I wish we could see that monkey. <laughs> Is that Sorry. Friday? I wish we could. I oh, wish we're we gone could, again, Jim. Are we gone again? <laughs> I wish we could see the monkey. <laughs> oh, he's he's gone again. He was making faces at me, so I kind of started laughing at the end of it. So you, you don't think he's in? You don't think he's in the other room pulling the strings on your audio? <laughs> on off, is he? he? He could be doing something to do. Yeah. Uh, Kathleen Walker in New York City says so pretty, and Bernadette is saying so so lovely, and that really is a beautiful song. And you have mm. such, you know, your voice is. Uh, absolutely exquisite and, and just very pleasing to the ear. And, uh, and of course you're a brilliant musician and harpist as well. And as a matter of fact, we do have even more evidence of that because we have, there's a, um, there's a great video here sent along. This is a uh, Roseville fair featuring oh, uh, Ewan. Tell us yeah. about this one. Oh, this is a lovely song. And um, on the album lore, I did all uh, traditional songs, bar this one. And my sister, my youngest sister, Aileen, got married in 2018. And I was singing at the wedding. She said, I don't care what you sing, but I really want this song, Roseville Fair. So she played me a version of it with Liam Clancy. And it's just the loveliest song. And it could be, you know, it sounded so Irish. And um, Ewan was in the band in Celtic Woman with me and we became very good friends. So he has toured, actually, he toured all over the Netherlands with me and we do any concerts and stuff that I play. He always plays with me. And uh, so during the lockdown, again, he played his guitar and I sang it. But Roosevelt Fair is just a lovely, lovely song. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. Let's take a look at that right now. You're going to enjoy this, folks. We were looking, previewing this earlier today, and it is spectacular. If you're just joining us, I'm your host, Jim Masters. We're live worldwide on the Jim Masters Show Live. Our phenomenal guest, live from her beautiful home in Ireland with Freddie the monkey running around, <laughs> having a good time. Uh, this is Orla Fallon. And take a look at this. You're going to love this uh, Roseville Fair. And we'll be back. Hi everyone, I hope you're all really well. I have a very special treat in store for you this week. I'm joined by my friend, the wonderful guitar player, Ewan Cowley, and together we're going to do for you Roseville Fair, the new single from my forthcoming album, Lore. I hope you'll enjoy it. Maybe dance all night To the fiddle and the banjo The way we did at the Roseville Fair Oh, the night was clear The stars were shining
There you are. <laughs> I like that shot. <laughs> and, and then, do you, <laughs> now that other screen, do you want me to leave that up? Are you going back to that or are you going to stay there? Because the lighting there is really nice by the heart. Hold on now. I'm trying to come. Sorry. I have to because my phone was going to die. <laughs> yeah. oh, so God. Gosh. <laughs> this will be your worst show, Jesus. <laughs> no, no, it's Hold fine. What we'll do is we'll remove the black screen. And there you are. I'm trying to cut off the other phone and I can't. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. It's a, it's <laughs> I have two things going. People don't have any understanding of what it takes to pull all these things off, right? There you are. I got it. I turned there it you off. Go. Yay. Sorry. High five. Yay. <laughs> See, that's yeah, the kind I'm of sorry. high five we can do, social distance, where we don't actually yeah. touch. Yeah. But it seems like yeah. it. that was excellent with uh, you. And tell, uh, tell us again, uh, is that available on the CD again? Oh, that yes. Beautiful. Yes, it's on, really. It's on the album, Lore, And it was written by a really nice man called Bill Staines. And he has been in touch with me many times since he heard the recording and he loves it. And he was so nice. And it's a, isn't it a gorgeous song? It's just a real yes. feel good, happy, happy song. Just want to show you some more of the levity coming through from our international viewers in the Gym Master Show Live. Uh, greetings from Amsterdam. Christmas cheer, Orla, as well. Bernadette says, uh, so, so lovely. Kathleen in New York City says, so pretty, as well. Uh, Kathy Short is saying, you have a lovely voice, Orla, and we agree, absolutely. Thank you. Emmanuel, hello and greetings from Mexico City. Welcome, wow. Emmanuel. Hi. Yeah. Uh, Bernadette says, uh, makes my heart happy. Kathleen saying lovely. Very beautiful from Kathy. Denise Orla saying delightful. Uh, that's Ola for Orla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ola. Oh, I love. Hi from Norway. Welcome. Hi. Nice to see you in Norway. Uh, anybody watching on our YouTube channel, we would love if you subscribe to our channel, Jim Masters TV. And the Celestial Harpist. Hi, oh, Orla. It's hey. good to hear and see you. Lovely she, to see you, Shayla. She's great. She, that's Shayla? Yeah. She, and she's a great harpist. She's really good. Yeah. We have to have her come on the show as a guest as well. That would be wonderful. Nice to she's see you. Good. Uh, hey, yeah. Lisa. Lovely to see you. Awesome. There, as too. Always. And John Flood is here. I love oh, Rose Hair. Hello, Welcome, how are you? everybody. Nice to see these yeah. uh, faces, our regular Lovity viewers, and some new folks joining us as well uh, right on our YouTube channel. Hope you subscribe. And the that would be amazing. Yes. Now, do you ever, uh, I know some folks like, like Mairead, uh, your colleague from Celtic Woman, teaches uh, violin and the fiddle. Have you done that as well? Have you taught others and over the time? Yes. I used to teach harp and singing, um, did it for a long time. I don't do it anymore, but I did teach a lot and very much enjoyed it, but I don't anymore. Yeah. I don't have the time anymore really to so do it. So busy now, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So busy and so much going on. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But it is. Uh, how about your, uh, your son? Does your son have any musical prowess? Is he interested in any instruments? He, Freddie? uh, He's a lovely voice, he's lovely singing, but he, he's more into sport, to be honest. Uh, he's he was, a, he's uh, an athlete, yeah. He's very into sports, like he lives for, like he never stops. He's eight years old and he plays rugby, he plays soccer, he plays Gaelic football, and he's running around the place from the time he gets up in the morning. He just loves it. Um, it was so funny, years ago he used to sing with me in the car and he was supposed to start the violin and I said, gosh, Freddie, it'll be great in a few weeks time, you'll be able to sing this song with me and you, I'll sing it and you play the violin. He says, you can sing away, mom, but the violin will be in the river. <laughs> <laughs> the violin will be in the river. <laughs> yeah. So that, that told is, uh, me. So we he, didn't he take cuts up the lesson. The chase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's always been really witty from the time he was tiny. So yeah, and I'd never put, you know, because you have to love it and want to do it. Um mm -hmm. but so he's just yeah. pas passion his passion is sport. So we Absolutely. encourage that. And hmm. Well, we have another wonderful song here too, uh, putting folks in the holiday spirit. This is you doing Away in a Manger. Tell us a little bit about this one. 
Oh yeah, well I did this. This was this is from um, um, a Winter's Tale. I mix up because I have a Winter Fire and Snow album and I have a Winter's Tale. So this is from the album Winter's Tale, and um, it's a, th there's two versions of Away in a Manger. So there's the American one, the Away in a Manger, no crib for his bed, and then there's the other one that we would have grown up with in Ireland, the Away in a Manger, no crib for his bed. So I had done the Irishy English European version on Winter Fire and Snow. So this one that you're going to hear coming up now is from it's the American one that you'd have all like Ella Fitzgerald sang it. So I said if it was good enough for Ella Fitzgerald, it's good enough for me. So this is that version of it. Kind of unique how one song can be done two different ways and interpreted. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I'd like to know when that happened too. You know, when that transition happened once uh you know America embraced that song so many moons ago and yeah. uh sort of turn both versions are beautiful do you have a preference over which version you like no i love i love both of them i think both of them are beautiful because i remember um being backstage um at a brick jim brickman concert jim brickman, and yeah. he was playing it on the piano and tracy silverman was playing it on the violin oh, yeah. and i just thought gosh this is gorgeous and it was just really poignant i was just standing there and i always you know just some some things that you never forget and that was right. one of those moments and that was the american version of it and there was a really nice because you know when people go to a concert they never think of the crew who are backstage who set no. up everything and and i was i was, i I have great respect for all the the guys and the crew and they're so good and they always look after us so well. So Jim had this really nice guy who was part of the crew and the two of us, we were just standing there talking. He said, this is the American version of it because he had heard me singing my version of it. And I just thought it was a thing of great beauty. So yeah, it was great then for myself to, to record it. But on my version, there's a little Irish thing thrown into it because there's a bit of a, a no Carolyn tune thrown into it. So keep it, mm. bring a bit of myself to it, yeah. Tracy Silverman is an extraordinary violinist, isn't he? Oh, he's amazing and a really mm. nice guy. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was, of course, that night that we were at the Palace Theatre when you were there and Jim Brickman yeah. and Lisa Brown, and, which was really an amazing night. Uh, let's enjoy, as we're in the holidays here, uh, this wonderful gift from our dear friend and guest here live from Ireland. Orla Fallon doing Away in a Manger. Enjoy. We'll be back. She's right next to her beautiful harp there too. She's going to play something for us additionally as well, folks. So enjoy this and uh, getting, if you weren't in the holiday spirit yet, you shall be when you hear this and we'll be back. Enjoy. This next piece is taken from my album, A Winter's Tale. And all my music is available on all the usual digital platforms such as Spotify and iTunes. But also if you check out my website, orlafallon.com, you'll find all the information you need. I'm going to do a piece now for Christmas to get us into the holiday mood and I'm going to do Away in a Manger with a little bit of Thurlach O'Carolyn thrown in. I hope you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Really, really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. The, the blending of your gorgeous voice with your uh, beautiful harp is extraordinary. It really, really is. And that's why everybody loves you. <laughs> they also love the fact that you're passionate and you really care about your incredible craft. Oh, and we were matching in our jumpers too. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and it's funny because uh, they were saying that jumper, and I forgot that in Ireland they call the sweaters the jumpers. Because yeah. I was thinking, of the, I was thinking of those little outfits that the toddlers, the kids wear. Like the kid is in a little oh, jumper, yeah, 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 like yeah. a little like overalls or something. Yeah, yeah. That's, so it's really really cool. Tell us about that gorgeous instrument you have right next to you. and that shot the way the light is coming oh, off yeah 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 it's beautiful 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 yeah. tell us about yeah. this gorgeous harp so this is i play a salvi harp and um this harp has been like with me all over the place um it's been all over the world actually and it's called harry harp <laughs> it has a name and it was christened by i was talking to you a little while ago about crew and um th we had two english crew with us and they were very english you know and they say oh where's Harry up there and uh, it's an yeah i just love the sound it's a, it's a salvi egan harp and actually they don't make them anymore and uh this was given to me by Salvi many years ago and I just love it and I love the sound that it makes and um, yeah, it's a really lovely instrument. It really is and you are one of the great uh, harp players, harpists in the world, Orla. You really are um, magnificent at it and again, just that with, coupled with your extraordinary voice and um, everything that you do is so inspiring too and uplifting um and Aww, i know that that's really you. you know you're very welcome and that's and i love all that i'm in tune with all of that you uh that matters to you right music that cuts deep to the heart and to the soul and leaves an impression that's positive and uplifting is really uh something very important to you isn't it Oh, yeah, I won't sing a song or play a tune unless it really speaks to me. And if it doesn't touch my heart or if it doesn't move me, well, then it's left there. <laughs> well, I um, like that. It's, yeah. it's very important to me to sing music that really inspires me and that brings something to people. Like when I started, when I used to sing, like I spoke about my grandmother earlier, um, she used to get very emotional listening to me singing songs and she was always moved by it. And I saw from a very early age the power of music and how it can move people and the power it has to take people to a different place. So as a musician, you feel you're in a very privileged position. So when I started like performing in concerts and stuff from a young age, I had I, it was in my head. It's important to take people to a different place and to move people. And I used to always say, if you move one person, you're doing your job, a good job. So it's always been so important to me. Mm -hmm. What kind of music do you like to listen to when it's not music, obviously, that you're performing, creating, presenting for all of us? What are some of the folks that inspire you musically? Oh, well, I just, I just love all kinds of music. I listen to every kind of music under the sun. Like, um, I love Bruce Springsteen. Holy moly. I think he's brilliant. I love his band. Um, you know, his Western Star album. I have that worn out. I played it and played it and played <laughs> it. I just loved it. I just think he's a brilliant songwriter, a brilliant musician, brilliant artist. Um, but like actually at the moment we're listening to Michael Bublé's Christmas album. But, I, you know, I remember buying on tour Yo-Yo Ma's Christmas oh, Songs yeah. of Joy and Peace. And, you know, I just think that's an amazing album. And again it moves me same with you know bruce Springsteen. but like growing up i loved clannage and was hugely inspired by them and their sound because moya sang with the harp and uh the chieftains um but then i love jazz as well and so i love every kind of music and i listen to a lot of classical music as well so there's always music on we listen to a station here 
a radio station called Lyric FM. So it's all music. So yeah. there's music on that. The minute I get up in the morning, it's turned on and it waves its way all around the house. So it's music is hugely important, but all kinds. Yeah. Except I don't like rap. <laughs> I just don't <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, you're not gonna do a, a rap song on that harp, huh? <laughs> no, I don't think so. That would I'm be, not uh... cool. I'm not cool enough anyway, Jeepers. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't... know. I don't even know if there is a rap song that even has harp in it, you know. I don't that would know. be no. would... yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That's right. Her na next album is Rap Favorites with Orla. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> well, Holy you're doing smokes. You're doing the rap now. You're rapping with me back and forth. Yeah, Our yeah. conversation is rapping, right? <laughs> hello, hello, Levities. How's it going? Here's yeah, from Levities, Orla from Orla. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> with Masters and Fallon on yeah. the Jim Masters Show Live. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> See, we just started something, <laughs> folks. We'll be on tour in the fall of 2021. Okay. Fallon and Masters, <laughs> FNM Productions. Rap. The rap tour. The, the rap version. <laughs> the rap version, right, exactly. Yeah. Um, we have some more music, a couple of videos to show as well. But while you have that beautiful harp there, oh, yeah. you wanted to uh, share some more yeah. music with our lovely viewers and with me, right? Yeah. So I was going to do, so this would be, check the tune. So anything about the harp goes out of tune very quickly. But sure. anyway, so this uh, is from my Winter Fire and Snow album. And um, it is uh, called Soon Three. So Soon Three means lullaby, and it's Soon Three are Salani horse. So it's like a lullaby to the Savior, to the baby Jesus. So this is a really, really old, ancient. It, it's sung a lot at Christmas time here, even though it wouldn't be well known as a Christmas song. But for me, it just epitomizes Christmas. Yeah. Beautiful. So this is Soon Three. With Orla. <laughs> So beautiful, so beautiful, my friend. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, what is it about the harp itself that really speaks to you? Why for you the harp? Well, I just think it's mystical and magical. And I was just drawn to it. Um, the school I went to was a fantastic harp school. And even if you just look at it and 
I've always loved to sing. So I thought it was such a lovely instrument in which to accompany yourself. So that was really the reason I took up the harp. And then I started playing tunes and stuff. But it just it takes you to another place. And um, I just get lost when I play it. I just love it. And it is a mystical, magical instrument. It really, really is. The one that you have there, I mean, how heavy is that? That must be something to uh, wheel around. Oh, yeah. I say I wish I played a fiddle or a tin whistle. It'd be a lot easier to cart <laughs> around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just lift it, have it inside your pocket. Yeah, no, it's heavy enough to cart around. I have wheels on my case. Um, but, yeah, no, you're constantly lugging it around, yeah. Mm. Yeah, some wonderful comments coming in here. Um, Mystical, yes, from Bernadette. Kathleen Walker in New York City, beautiful. The harp sounds pretty. Jennifer Barry uh, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, USA, saying so good, magical. Thank you, Orla. And uh, in Norway, I love that. Ah, Silagy, uh, yes, that's Silagy. That's she's a great girl, and she's a great singer too. Fantastic. She really? Yeah, yeah, she's a great singer. She says, absolutely gorgeous. And Lisa Thank says, you. Orla, you put warmth in our hearts and smiles on our faces. Oh, thank you. You know exactly how to make the world smile, Orla. By the way, you look very stylish in the glasses. Oh, I don't know. I can't see anything without them. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, I see the extended spelling uh, of the name with the G-H and oh, then yeah. everything else, Orla, O-R-L-A. Do you do both? Well, personally, I go by O R L A G H, um, and then professionally it's O R L A, and yeah. So that's because Took when I started bit. in Celtic Woman, first days, I always spelled my name O R L A G H, and I remember Sharon Brown, the woman, saying, "Everybody will call you O R L A G, so lose the G H." So ah. that kind of like yeah, mm. yeah. I see. Yeah, that, that's it's interesting. Well, I was born. Um, James, but sort of, yeah, use Jim or Jimmy. Jim. Mm. Yeah, Jim, but but really all of us, I'm the fifth one in the family, the fifth James Masters goes back wow. to England and Ireland. So we're going to add the GH. <laughs> <laughs> we just added the GH for you. <laughs> no charge, cool. no charge. Cool. 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 <laughs> Did you have something else while you have the harp there that you wanted to share with us? Um, well, I play a tune actually. Yeah, that would I be wonderful. Um, Tell us about uh, the, the audience always likes to know the room that the guest is in. Tell us about the room that you're in. Oh, this is my music room. And um, it's like my little getaway. And um, I kind of just, nobody ever comes in here, really only me. So <laughs> it's it's like my space. It's, it's, a, it's a great um yeah, it's like my husband actually, and he ever comes in here. Or no, but oh, this is just yes. my, it's my little den, you know. It's your den, it's your hideaway, it's where you're creative, right? Y Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm here at all, at all hours. Yes, I love it. So. Okay, so this Sounds is called Blind, Blind Mary. Blind Mary. It, it sounds beautiful even when you're tuning it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
That really is beautiful. It's like a lullaby, you know? Mm, that's one of Thurlough Carolyn's tunes. It's a really nice, um, I love all his tunes. They're just really, you know, sure they're hundreds of years old, but the melodies are so nice and um, just, you just feel like you're in an old castle somewhere playing it. It's, it's just nice, yeah. I want to show you some of the lovely comments coming in. The Celestial Harvest, absolutely stunning, Orla. And Thank Jennifer you. Jennifer Barry says, Orla, what are castles really like in Ireland and Scotland? I love castles. <laughs> wow. Well, have you ever um, played in a castle? You've played in castles. Oh, loads. Before. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was funny. There was this beautiful castle very close to where um, my parents lived. It was called Humid Castle. So when I was in, a, a child, so it was like down to, you know, everybody in America, everybody, everywhere knows Downton Abbey. So my cousins actually for their summer job worked there so everybody this woman her name was madame vegan owned the castle and um when she'd come from france for her summer holidays everybody would line up on the avenue waiting to meet them and it was just so beautiful and stunning so that was their summer job and they learned to cook and do all sorts of stuff it was fantastic but when she died it was sold and this woman bought it and uh she refurbished the whole place but she kept it as her home so it wasn't like a hotel wow. and um i got the gig there as the harpist so i used to go up there and play and um it was amazing so christmas on christmas eve i was always there every christmas eve night and she was so lovely to me her name was renata coleman amazing woman and um I used to play for a while and then I used to always have dinner with them, sit at the table and I was always put at the top of the table and, you know, you could meet anybody there. You know, the wonderful actor, John Hurt, mm, he sure. was, I remember playing charades with him and a whole gang of people when I, it was so funny. It was like so surreal. And um, yeah, so, and I used to love playing in the house, you know, and she had a butler and all the staff and everything. And it was just like something out of the movies, but she was always so nice to me. So, uh, every Christmas Eve, I was always there, and it was fab. Yeah, beautiful. Mm, very, mm. very nice. What are some of the things that inspire you to create this beautiful music and continue on with this illustrious career and inspiring everybody else, bringing the breathtaking music that you do? What are some of those blessings in your life and joys that inspire you going forward on a daily basis, Orla? Well, I'm very inspired by nature. I'm very into nature. Um, I love my garden. Um, I'm, if I didn't play music, I'd just be a full-time gardener, a dotty old gardener. And I think when I'm out in the garden, I think of tunes, even when I'm learning tunes and learning songs, I sing away in the garden. And uh, so nature very much inspires me. Even when I record any new music, I drive up to the Wicklow Mountains where my father came from and I play the music up there. And if it feels right with the landscape, then I know I've done a good job. So I'm very much inspired by nature and by surroundings. Same with the river here. I love walking by the River Barrow and singing there. And uh, yeah, I, and so nature and the environment, they're hugely important to me and to my music, yeah. It's so it inspires you in such a beautiful way. And I'm a green thumb as well, a gardener. And there really is, oh. uh, yeah, very much so. Always been, even as a kid too. And Me this too. year, you know, with this, everything that's gone on this year, gardening actually was one of the most popular hobbies mm -hmm. uh, here in the United States, but also around the world because it was so therapeutic. And it's something that, um, yeah. you know, you can get your hands dirty and you can get in there and, and you're nurturing something, you're taking yeah. care of something. And then, all the time and energy and love and, and attention you give it, it pays you back in either beautiful foliage or flowers or vegetables and fruits. And so it's like one helping the other along. Yes. And I think it's a, yeah. it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Oh, it's incredible. And then like tomorrow is the shortest day of the year, like the winter solstice. And, That's right. um, you know, I remember I had a lecturer in college and he was always quoting from if winter comes, can spring be far behind, he used to say. And it's like you plant your bulbs then and, you know, and it's coming into winter in the darkness and then you can see them peeping through now already. So it's like the cyclical nature of it. And it's so powerful and so positive. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree 100 percent. What, what do you grow? What's in your garden? Oh, I have like, I adore roses. So I have roses everywhere. I have roses all over the house, um, climbing roses. Um, 
I've everything. I've an herbaceous border, so I have loads of every different plant under the sun uh, all around the house, and I have lots of irises. Um, and then I've like honeysuckle and jasmine growing up on the house as well. And then somebody gave me a cutting of a passion flower, so that's at the back in the sunny area. So um, yeah, and I'm obsessed with hydrangeas as well. So I've hydrangeas everywhere. So there's just everything. And then I've an orchard, and we like with fruit trees and apples and so that's fun picking the fruit the apples in the autumn so yeah so I've lots of stuff so then the spring like now I've lots of hellebores out in the garden so there's um there's yeah I've jeepers it's a big garden so <laughs> there's lots yes. of stuff everywhere so that's fantastic mm, yeah I love it it's brilliant yeah what would be something else people don't know about you? Obviously, you love to garden. Are there other hobbies, other interests that you have that you really enjoy doing, even separate from music and entertaining and performing? Well, I used to be mad into horses and used to ride a lot of horses when I was younger. I don't anymore, but I still love watching the horse racing. <laughs> so, right. yeah. Yeah. And because we where we live, there's a lot of horses around here. And my father used to have horses, so we used to go to the races a lot. Um, so I love watching the horse racing. I, I love watching sport with my husband and uh, our little boy and got into rugby a lot with, since he came along because he loves rugby. So, yeah, I just I think sport is brilliant, too, because it's just the energy in it and it can unify people as well. You know, yes. everybody sitting down like yesterday, usually the All Ireland is played here in the summertime, at the end of the summer. But yesterday we actually had our All Ireland football final yesterday and we sat, we lit the fire and we sat up and my mom and my husband and Freddie, and we watched it and we really enjoyed it. So, yeah. So I think sport is brilliant too. Um, yeah. And I like to cook. So those are kind of my things. Yeah. What yeah. are your specialties? Uh, oh God, I don't know. And if it's got to involve potatoes, right? <laughs> I don't. I actually, me and Freddie don't eat potatoes. So we're like, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not mad into potatoes at all. Freddie just cannot bear them. Um, yeah. my, no, my, sister, my sister, believe it or not, isn't big with potatoes either. She'd rather have rice. I remember as a kid growing up, we would have the potatoes, but my mother would have to make something separate for her because she wanted like the rice and things instead of the potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, we wouldn't be great spud people now, but my husband, he, he loves them. So, and I like baking. I bake a lot. So we like baking. Yeah. Have you been doing that a lot for the holidays, cookies and different things? Yeah. And lots of cakes. We love chocolate cake and brownies. I love brownies. I make nice hazelnut brownies. They're really good. Uh, when you're baking and cooking, are you sampling as you're doing it? Or God, do you <laughs> too much, too much. No, <laughs> that's the bad thing. You make a cake and you're taking like you just, I'll just taste this. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. So you're cooking, just checking yeah. to make sure it tastes good, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and Freddie loves licking the bowl. You have to keep the bowl. Oh, yeah. The bowl the oh, yeah. absolutely. That's that's, that's one great. thing I hope they, after all, everything we've gone through, I hope that's one thing that never goes away is the licking of that cake bowl. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's one of the great childhood memories. Yeah. Uh, you Probably know, you mentioned you doing that, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Not sharing it, that's for sure. Um, yeah. You mentioned your mother. What mm -hmm. was it like and has it been like for your family, maybe the parents, the family members, when your career started taking off and, you know, all of the notoriety of Celtic Woman, but just also your own solo career? I would imagine, because, they, you know, they, they've seen you all the way through and then have been here to witness your joy, blessing, and success through all the hard work, the blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice, hours, travel, all of it. Um, what was that feeling like and what is that feeling like for them and for you? Well, my father passed away six years ago, and I'm so oh. glad that he got to see. He got a chance. Um because I remember the, like he'd never travel anywhere. He, he didn't like going abroad, but he, you know, bar was for the races. So he, um, it was, it was fantastic that he got to come to see Carnegie Hall and to travel, you know, and I can still just see the pride of my parents standing outside Car Carnegie Hall the day before we played there. And so, yeah, it's been great that they've like, and my mom actually lives right beside us now. So, which is fantastic. And, um, yeah, so it was great that they've got to see 
feel all the different things. And I think they get sick of me singing those too. So <laughs> they're so <laughs> listening to me so often. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like my family's like, oh, what? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. There she goes again. <laughs> yeah. So right. that's, that's the thing about um, an Irish family for bringing you down to earth. You never get um, ideas above your station because they'll always bring you back down to earth. <laughs> So. They'll always center it. They'll always say, okay, okay, you can come out of the sky now and uh, join a sort of reality a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that is funny. That's the way it is. And it's good to have that balance. Life is truly all about balance. You oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we have another song here that we're going to share. Now, this one is, this is a beautiful one, In the Bleak Midwinter. Tell us about your oh, performance with this yeah. one. Uh, this is one of my favorite carols, actually. I love it. I just think it's so evocative. And yeah, um, yeah I'm singing it nearly every day at the moment. I just love it so much. And um, it's just there's something mystical about it. And the words are yeah. lovely. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely piece. Here it is, the wonderful Orla Fallon with the G-H. <laughs> <laughs> We added that for her. You can call her O-R-L-A. You can add the G-H, however you like to do it. She's just a wonderful person and a, a beautiful spirit inside and out. And such a pleasure and honor to have her here on our show live from Ireland today on the Gym Master Show Live. Just in time for the holidays, you heard Away uh, in a Manger earlier. Here is her beautiful rendition of In the Bleak Midwinter, which is one of the most beautiful of the winter and seasonal songs as well, my friends. And uh, here we go and enjoy. And we'll be back with a little more with our friend Orla Fallon. Enjoy. This next song very much takes me back to my This is a very evocative time. And it's a time for looking back. And I think this carol captures beautifully the magic of winter and Christmas. I hope you'll enjoy this version of In the Bleak Midwinter. <laughs> Thank you. 
Really nice. That that's such a beautiful, beautiful song too, isn't it? Don't you love that song? That's beautiful. Oh, it's a lovely song. Yeah, and it never that, gets old. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else while you have the harp there that you wanted to share for us? Or maybe a holiday carol or anything while you're there with it? Um, oh gosh, I didn't think I because I, I'll actually have to go because my husband's after putting his head in the door saying he can't get <laughs> ready to bed. So he'll have to come. Um, I might do just a quick little version of Iha Kewen, which is Silent Night in Gaelic. Oh, that is beautiful. So, that is beautiful. So would that be okay? Yes, and thank your husband and thank Freddie too for their <laughs> their patience and their their being so quiet. We heard them when they were playing the match, and it was really cool <laughs> yeah. to hear that in the background. But now they're sort of. Uh, did you did you guys already eat dinner? Oh yeah, I see. It's, oh, that's it's, good. it's almost it's it's twenty to ten here, so it's well past that monkey's bedtime. So he's so eating bed that happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and a yeah. time time for a snack for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> So I might do this version of Iha Kuhn. Um, That's a wonderful um, way to, yeah. to wrap. Yeah. Absolutely, my friend. And yeah. thank you so much for gracing our presence with all of thank you conversation and music. And you're welcome back. We'll we'll do a goodbye after you're done with that. But um, thank you. we really appreciate everything that you've done over the years. You really are a glorious talent and a beautiful person inside and out, my friend. And you're definitely welcome back anytime here. Thank you so much. I could chat to you all night. Thank you very I know, much. All right. And we we Irish like to chat, don't we? <laughs> we do. We do. So, and uh, this is for all your beautiful uh, listeners out there. The levities. Yeah. The levities. Levities. tough to top that one especially done by you and especially done on that exquisite heart my friend thank oh, you thank so much ah you. oh, you're very very welcome i just want to show you before we we scoot out here uh, bernadette is saying our loveities my heart is full gorgeous Aww. claps and claps and ovations from willie watching in the netherlands thank jennifer you. barry in allentown pennsylvania thank you orla for spending time with us happy winter solstice and yule tomorrow slancha carla smiles and happiness from brazil uh brought tears to my eyes bernadette Aww. sherry show in line wow goosebumps thank you the celestial harpist thank you for your beautiful music orla merry christmas Aww. thank you uh, 
Lisa Brown, thank you, Jim, for bringing Orla to our homes today. My pleasure. Uh, Glad you enjoyed it. Merry Christmas, everyone. Singing along, enjoying this very much. So beautiful. Uh, Carla in South America, comfy, lovely, and fabulous moment during this holiday season. Thank you, Orla and Jim. Lisa says it was wonderful spending the afternoon with you, Orla. Merry Christmas. Justin Moore watching. Welcome, oh, Justin. Hello. To the show. Hi, yeah. Justin. How are you? Just lovely as always, Orla. Happy Christmas, Jim and Orla, and happy and from family in Albuquerque. I love Albuquerque. I was on a TV shoot about two years ago. New Mexico, USA. Wow. Kathleen Walker in New York City. Clapping, clapping, clapping. So stunning. So beautiful. <laughs> Thank Such you, everybody. Thank you. Such beautiful Orla, you are amazing. R really, really. Thank wonderful. you. Thank you we're all so much. Wonderful, too. Even from Asia, we're getting love coming wow. in. John from Oklahoma, USL. Hey, John. Thanks. Thanks, John. Good to have you here on the Gym Master Show Live. Uh, Willie in Holland, thank you, Orla, your music and for your music and your stories. Orla, this really was uh, a very beautiful time, and especially at holiday time to have you here any time of the year would be wonderful. Um, you're really amazing at what you do, and uh, you're glorious at it, and I just wanted to personally thank you. I do have one quick question. I love this photo that they sent. Oh. That is cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> is that cool? <laughs> that, that's yeah. after that's after she does like a two hour concert and says, I'm through, I'm done. <laughs> I'm gonna let my hair down now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is cool, isn't it? That's that's such a yeah. great say I know it's a good picture. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And there's that other so, CD you talked about as well, Winter mm -hmm. Fire and Snow, and then of course Distant Shore. A Winter's Tale. The latest one is Lore as well. And um, again, my friend, a, a true honor and a blessing. I wish you and your family a beautiful and joyous holiday season. Very Merry Christmas. All the blessings for the upcoming new year. Thanks Thank so you. much for joining us. And I really hope that, um, you know, whatever expectations that you might have had of our show were met and that um, you enjoyed your time with me as much as I have with you. I absolutely had a ball. It was fantastic. Oh, really? I could I could stay on talking all night. It was. I really enjoyed it. And uh, you're fantastic company. And thank you uh, for everything. And um, I hope you have a very happy and healthy Christmas. And I hope that we can do this again. Yeah, that was absolutely. Great fun. We shall, my friend. We shall. Take care and Merry Christmas Take to your care. husband, and to Freddie and the family. And we'll see you again thank soon. You. Okay. Merry Christmas to all your lovely loveties. And oh, before I go, I just want to say hello to Joe and Kathy Chin because they're in Boston and I know they love your show too. And they were listening thank to you. you yesterday with Darren. So thank you and a big hello to them and to all your lovely, wonderful listeners and viewers. And please God that 2021 will see the end, you know, with the vaccine of this virus and good health to everybody and take good care and stay safe and stay well. Absolutely. And if folks want to learn more about your music, where can they find it? Your website, things of that nature? Pardon me? If folks want to get more of your music, yeah. they can go to the website and... Yes, everything is on my website. Yes. Cool. And that's orlafallon.com? That's it. That's it. Perfect. Okay, so I better Thank go you, and get friend. this fella to bed. Listen, get take, that kid to bed. <laughs> take care and happy Christmas and happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas, He's Orla. A great extension tonight. Bye. Take good care. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Okay, that was amazing, wasn't it? And Freddie, Freddie's got to go to bed, so we got to get Freddie to bed. Hey, Freddie is fantastic. As she was referring to him as monkey. He was watching a soccer match, and then he was playing the game with his father, uh, and you can hear the some, some of the action in the background. It was really, really fun. And we really appreciate Orla joining us on this Sunday. Uh, she's beautiful, isn't she? And she and I had met uh, a couple of times, actually, at uh, public television events, 
but also uh, at the Palace Theater, which is a beautiful theater in Connecticut that was just restored back to its original grandeur. And Jim Brickman, who's another great talent, I interviewed him on public television several years ago. He was performing, Tracy Silverman, Orla was there, uh, Lisa Brown, you were there, and we took some pictures and everything, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, she played for us, we had some great videos and all kinds of beautiful things here. Uh, on our show. And I hope you guys enjoyed it all. It was really a treat. And if you want to see this again, well, there's a way to do that. Let me show you how you can do it. All you need to do is just watch it again on our YouTube channel. That's it. If you missed this episode, want to watch it again or watch any of the artists uh, or any of the episodes of the Gym Master Show live. We're here every day. Our regularly scheduled time is 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on YouTube. Uh, you can find 200 episodes of our series, uh, 39, almost 40 weeks with guests from all walks of life. This is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series. So every show is something different. Coming up at 7 p.m. tonight, another Irish artist, Emmy nominated Michael Londra is going to be joining us. He's going to be performing live. We're going to have lots of great conversations with him as well. He is originally from Ireland. Of course, you know him, his wonderful voice from Riverdance, also wonderful public television specials and, and so much more. He is going to be joining us live at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. That's 7 p.m. Eastern tonight, 4 p.m. Pacific. Michael Londra live on the Gym Master Show. So we'll be back in about a little over two hours with another episode of the Gym Master Show live. And I want to let you know tomorrow, live from Canada, Canadian singer and songwriter Luke McMaster is going to be here, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on the Gym Master Show live as well. He's another brilliant performer. That is tomorrow, Monday, on the Gym Master Show live. But tonight, again, at 7 p.m. Eastern, an incredible show with a very popular Emmy-nominated singer, producer, and more. Michael Landra is going to be here. Again, we thank the delightful Orla Fallon for joining us live from her home in Ireland, exclusively here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Love that picture. And uh, she's just a brilliant artist. And again, you know her from her solo career. Of course, you know her from... Celtic woman and uh, wonderful stories. Lots of Irish crack as well. She shared with us uh, wonderful personal tales of her life. There she is, of course, with the Celtic woman gang. And I've had an opportunity to uh, know all the lovely ladies and interview them and chat with them. And there's, of course, Orla. That, that harp is absolutely uh, extraordinary, isn't it? The harp is one of the more beautiful. And again, this is Michael Landra coming up at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. and. Uh, the harp is one of the most beautiful sounding instruments, uh, especially this time of the year. I so enjoyed this. Thank you very much. And I hope you'll watch regularly on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. And we encourage folks, anybody watching, to share the levity. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. We would love that. We have incredible guests, amazing uh, entertainment, inspiring conversations. We talk about everything from food to music to comedy to life and so much more behind the scenes stories on location segments and so much more. And again, I do this work professionally in television and radio and so glad we started this show some 40 weeks ago. For years, people asked me to do a show like this and I'm so happy that uh, we've been able to do it. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter, Periscope and Twitch, all at Gym Masters TV, YouTube Gym Masters TV, Facebook at Gym Masters TV as well. And of course, you can find Orla at OrlaFallon.com. Be sure and do that. Uh, her music is extraordinary. And if you have a suggestion for a guest, a lot of folks have been uh, telling us about guests and the guests have been coming on left and right, people that I find people that um, other friends are finding, some of the guests are suggesting. Darren just suggested, Darren Holden, who was on yesterday, suggested a bunch of guests uh, as well. You can send guest inquiries to gymmasterstv at gmail.com. That's gymmasterstv at gmail.com. And they don't have to be music artists. They don't have to be actors. They don't have to be performers. They could be uh, anybody doing something really cool in our world. And, uh, you know, feel free to uh, send guest inquiry suggestions to our uh, email and then we'll uh, peruse through that and uh, share that with everybody and hopefully get some of the guests uh, 
on the show as well. Some comments coming in. I just want to let you know as well that if you missed Sir James Galway and Lady Jean Galway, they were on the show um, Friday and that was exquisite. That was an incredible conversation. They played live and uh, from their home in Switzerland. Uh, if you're looking for other artists in the Irish uh, family uh, contingent, we've had uh, conversations and guests that have included recently uh, Connor McGinty, as well as Roy Buckley, Corner Boy, Mick from Corner Boy. Phil Coulter was on just a few weeks ago with an incredible conversation. Uh, the lads from Celtic Thunder were here uh, individually too, separate individual conversations and guest appearances on the Jim Master Show Live. I've interviewed all of them over the years on television in America. Ryan Kelly, you can see interviews with Ryan, with Neil Byrne. Uh, last week, we had Keith Harkin on live from Portugal. Uh, so we did Keith Harkin. He was wonderful. Paul Byron was also a guest. Damian McGinty, Colin uh, Keegan. Chloe Agnew was also on in the summertime. Red Aid Nesbitt, another dear friend, uh, was also here as well. You can see all of those on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Uh, Michael Landra, another, another Irish artist who's brilliant, coming up, Orla Fallon today. So there's the uh, email address if you have guest suggestions, and many of you do. And uh, this was really terrific, a lot of fun. We're going to have a quick dinner. We thank again our very special guest, the wonderful Orla Fallon. She was brilliant. Not only did we show you wonderful material, but we also, uh, she performed live. And uh, all of these artists and all of these amazing guests are all welcome. They all love coming back on the show too. Several have been return guests on the Jim Masters show live already, uh, which we really appreciate. We thank Orla. We wish her and her family a beautiful and blessed holiday season. And we wish... Yeah, the very same for all of you. Thanks for joining us. This is really cool. Again, if you'd like to uh, watch any of our episodes thus far, 200 of them, all you have to do is watch on our YouTube channel. Share the love and tell everybody about our show. Coming up in January, Nathan Carter is going to be here, the wonderful uh, English country superstar. Interviewed him on public television as well. He's going to be joining us. Also, world-renowned international Greek tenor Mario Frangoulis is going to be joining us live from Greece, from Athens. He'll be with us in January as well. And so many more incredible guests. And uh, Santa Claus wishes you a very Merry Christmas. This was when I was in New York City playing Santa Claus, emceeing a concert on stage in New York City in Manhattan at a concert hall for a dear singer friend. And uh, they wanted me to MC the concert, but then they also wanted me to double as Santa Claus. So I had to do a quick Superman change and go from MC in my suit and tie to Santa Claus. <laughs> so we're in the green room. This is a, a modern Santa Claus with his cell phone and everything. Uh, and there we are again. And we wish you again all the beauty and the blessings of uh, the season. And this is, of course, in New York City. Happy holidays, everybody. This is the Rockefeller Center tree. If you haven't seen it this year in uh, beautiful uh, Manhattan in New York at Rockefeller Plaza, that's what the tree looks like. And it's so uh, glorious as well. We also say to everybody, don't forget to smile. It's very important, not just during the holiday time, but all the time. Don't forget to smile. Enjoy the short break. Yes, I will be back at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Yet another excellent show. Thanks again. Orla is a sweet, sweet and talented. Absolutely. And thank you very much. I appreciate that, Willie. Enjoy the dinner. See you soon. Uh, don't forget to smile and share a smile. It's very important to do that. Don't forget to share the lovity as well all around the world. That's what we're all about here. Uh, and everybody's welcome on this show. Men, women, every age, every gender, every background. It doesn't matter where you live, how much money you have in the bank. Uh, doesn't matter political beliefs, doesn't matter zip code. Everybody is welcome to watch and enjoy the Gym Masters show live. We're all inclusive here on this show. Don't forget to find your Zen place. Mine is with loving family and friends, of course, and my work in television and radio all these years as a television radio presenter, host, and journalist, and more, an actor, voice artist, and uh, all the places I've had an opportunity to work in television and radio, love it all, and the people I've had an opportunity to work with, and many different scenarios, working for a lot of different TV stations, networks, and all kinds of stuff. And of course, the ocean, living here along the uh, northeastern coast in the United States of America, 
Uh, I love the ocean. So always swimming, surfing, boogie boarding, kite boarding, sailing and walking the ocean. And uh, although I wouldn't do it today while it's snowing outside, might be a little nippy. <laughs> might be just a tad nippy. We thank all of you as well for joining us and may, you know, your days be merry and bright. We're going to take a quick look at some of the comments coming in that we're going to have dinner and get ready for our seven o'clock show with another brilliant artist, singer, Emmy nominated singer. He's had multiple specials. He was in Riverdance, Michael Lundra coming up. Thank you very much, Willie and Bernadette. We toast you as well. Thank you very much, Bernadette. That was so nice. Santa got all her wrapping done. See you in a few hours. Thank you, Kathy Short. We'll be here. And Willie, enjoy your dinner. Thank you very much. Lisa, good to see you. And I hope you'll watch our show. Uh, we're on every day, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. But when we have guests in later time zones, we do an extra show uh, earlier. This weekend, we've done two shows Friday, two shows Saturdays, and we're doing two shows today. Last weekend, we did the same thing. Two shows, two shows, two shows. It's amazing. I feel like a theater. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Jim, and a healthy, happy, healthy 2021. You as well, my friend, Lisa, and hope I see you soon after everything is smoothed out in our world. Thanks for a wonderful show, Jim. See you later. Thank you, Kathleen. So glad all of you enjoyed my very special guest and friend, Orla Fallon, for joining us here on the show. I so enjoyed this. Thank you, and I hope you'll watch more often on our YouTube channel. And thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks, Jim, for bringing Orla to us. Magical Slancha, you're welcome. Another amazing show, Jim. Thank you. My pleasure, my friends, my loveities here on the show. Sherry, we'll see you soon at 7 p.m. Eastern. That was so nice. Thank you very much. And how do you like our festive holiday set here, huh? Kind of cool. Lots of color. Only the best. Again, we do this like a television show. Uh, bringing back. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you as well. And Merry Christmas as well. And thank you very much for watching us in Asia as well. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to you as well. And from all over the world. This is your host, Jim Masters. Hmm. The coffee is not so hot anymore. It's a little nippy, so we're going to put an ice cube in it. We will have the rest of it. Uh, I just want to show you that uh, some of our uh, favorites are here, the cast of characters. George Burns says, we'll see you later on. <laughs> Silver, the dog we got when we were on a TV shoot in Switzerland, says, see you later. And of course, Gilligan from Gilligan's Island, his wife, Bob Denver, who played Gilligan, was a guest on our show. Dream of Denver. You can see that episode on YouTube on the Gym Masters TV channel. She sent us Gilligan. She looked at our set and said, you're missing something. We said, what are we, what are we missing? She said, you're missing Gilligan. So there is Gilligan. <laughs> and of course, Jeannie is here and Jeannie says, we'll see you later. There's Jeannie from TV series I Dream of Jeannie. See her in there? She's in the bottle. She's blinking. <laughs> you got to have fun, right? Life is short. And as we know, with everything we've been going through this year, all the craziness of this crazy year, you got to have smiles. You got to have fun. It is holiday time. And Jimmy says, thanks for watching. And we'll see you later. That's a childhood toy with his blue shoes and everything. He says, we'll see you later as well. So for everybody here at the Gym Master Show Live, uh, more coming in. See you again for sure. Thanks, Lisa. Appreciate that and spread the word about our show to everybody and love that YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook at Gym Masters TV. Hope you like the page and also on YouTube at Gym Masters TV. Thank you. Merry Christmas, Lisa. Time travel. Good to see you as well. Thank you, Jim, Darren, and Orla in the same weekend. Can't believe it. And Sir James Galway on Friday too. Really amazing. Thanks for joining us as well. Hope to see you on our YouTube channel again. Keep check of the channel for all the upcoming uh, shows. Also, our YouTube page, our Facebook page, that is, Gym Masters TV on Facebook. We post uh, upcoming shows. We do pop-up shows, too, where I pop up, and we have host chats, and we chat with our viewers around the world. We're going to be doing a couple of those during the holiday season as well. So look for those. We're going to announce those on our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. We're going to do some host chat uh, Christmas-themed episodes as well. So if you're with us at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, we invite you to join us then from Michael Landra. If not, you can see all these episodes on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. And uh, tomorrow we're also here at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on our YouTube channel with Luke McMaster, the brilliant Canadian singer and songwriter is going to join us as well. Thank you very much, Willie. We appreciate the beautiful tulips from Holland. 
and we wish everybody a wonderful rest of your day. We're back again, just to uh, remind everybody with Michael Landra at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for joining us. Lots of Irish crack, lots of good times, and uh, much more coming up. We're building an incredible 2021. We're, we're almost booked with guests for the entire month of January. After the holidays, we're going to be back with uh, some incredible guests uh, throughout January, and not just guests, but episodes that are really amazing, lots of on location, and a lot of cool things coming up. So we will see you soon coming up in about two hours. We'll be back. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We love you all. Spread the word and share the lovity on the Gym Master Show Live. Take care, and we'll see you again on the next episode of the Gym Master Show Live. Cheers. Mm -hmm.